Hey everybody, this is Mark the Game Shark here and with another how-to video. Now, today we are going to be replacing the battery inside a Game Gear battery pack. We are not going to be using the Game Gear, um, the, the back, the battery back. It's just the battery pack, the one that you clip onto your belt loop or whatever. I will be doing another how-to video on that. So this is, this tutorial is strictly just for these types of batteries, not for the other one. So, um, and without further ado, uh, let's get started. And first, let's go over the materials you'll need to replace the battery inside this thing. All right, so for a simple task, we definitely have a lot of tools here that you need to use to in order to fix this thing. So first off, you need a replacement battery. And this is a very good one to use. I've done a lot of research, and I think this one is... The optimal battery to use for re to replace this. Now we have a DNYX 1800 Duratrax 7.2 volt 1800 milliamp battery. So I went to the website. Um, I would highly recommend going on Amazon to pick this up. I'll leave a uh, link in the description to where you can get this on Amazon. So this is the battery I'm using. Now, it, all you have to, all you really need to care about is that 7.2 volts and the milliamps per hour, it doesn't matter. As long as, the higher the better, because it lasts longer. And I've done this video plenty of times with plenty of snacks, so I already cut the end, which was this. This was actually on the end here. So we'll go back and recut these as well and restrip them as we continue on with the tutorial. Now... The one snag, speaking of snags, I ended up needing to buy a special bit to, to take this guy apart. And that's a spanner bit. A number eight spanner bit. This is what I got. I bought it off. Is that going to focus? There you go. I bought this off Amazon, so I'll put a link in the description for that. Because, unfortunately, you can't get these at any hardware store. It's like, only on like Amazon or... You, I wouldn't recommend eBay. You can get them on eBay, but you're going to pay like three dollars more so I just got this on Amazon and this is what it looks like so you need a regular Phillips head for the one to undo the clip there you need a bigger pair of wire strippers to strip this type of wire and you need smaller pair of wire strippers to strip the internal uh, wire going to the the plug that goes into the circuit board in this we got heat shrink tubing. Oh, sorry for the glare. Got your normal solder, soldering iron, um, a Game Gear plug adapter, and last but not least, I have a, a heat gun. This is the HT3500 heat tool from Wagner. This, if you're getting a, in the market for a heat gun, I would highly recommend going with this because not only is it like it's, uh, you can fine tune whatever heat setting you want. It's all digital, which is nice. But when you turn it off, it has a self cooling mechanism. So you, once you turn it off, it it goes on and it cools the, the unit down, so you don't end up burning yourself by touching the end part right there. Which I have done with several other uh, heat, heat guns as well. And oh my god, it hurts. So yeah, so very awesome. I got this at, um, at Home Depot, actually. So I mean, I think, I'm sure you can use a hair dryer as well. But I figure I'd go, with the, go to extremes and use a heat gun for this tutorial. So now let's get on with uh, taking this sucker apart. Alright guys, so... Here we use the Phillips head to simply remove the clip. Like so. Come on, you dumb thing. There you go. So you lift up the top here towards that and it pops out. I was lifting from the bottom. So as you see, that reveals two hidden screws. And we got that one. So that this is where you need the spanner bit. And this is a pain in the ass. Because you have to like put it right in the center. 
and push down and unscrew it. And you will, you might jack up, like I see here, I, that, that, there's no getting around that, unfortunately, just because of the width of the bit. And I think if you went in the next size up, it wouldn't be able to fit in the hold on screw this thing. So. There we go. Oh. It's like stuck. <laughs> so there you go. Here's the first. I think I, there we go. Now I can just use my hand. So this is what the screw looks like. Is that going to focus? Probably not. Come on, focus. Come on, you can do it. Oh, fuck you then. It's just basically a... As you see, it's just a straight, like, bar-type looking thing. And the spanner bit just goes inside of it, like that. It doesn't go all the way, but it's good enough. Gets in there good enough just to unscrew it. I swear, these are pain in the ass. <laughs> there you see... I'm going to pause it and jump cut to when I finish it. <laughs> all right. We got the, all three screws out. I used the spanner bit tool. So now, this was, this took me a little bit to figure out, but now it's still stuck. It doesn't, you think, oh, all well, the screws out, it'll just come apart. No, it still has a little clamp inside here. Guy loves Sega. So what you do is you pull apart, and then you kind of like, shift shift this one up so you pull apart and then slowly go up and there you go it just snaps right off so i already yeah i left this disconnected <laughs> but here you go here's the old battery and they're actually like pretty much the same size and i made sure they fit so yeah so this will be a perfect replacement wait let me there we go there you go. Perfect replacement. New one. Old one. So then, then the next step is we need this plug to, so it will be able to plug into the circuit board right there. So first off, we need to cut the wire off the battery. Now make sure when you do this, you do them one at a time. Same like when you snip the... And for this one, you snip at the, at the tip. This one you want to snip as close to the battery. So they're opposite. But the technique's the same. You still want to go in and cut one at a time. You don't want to cut them both because then you'll be touching. And that could be bad. Go in here. Snip. And... Uh. Snip. And there you go. This battery, you can you know, do whatever, dispose of it. So now we got good wire, good uh, plug. And now we basically just have to splice these wires together. The red on red and black on black, obviously. So first off, let's strip these down. I don't know what gauge this is, so I'm going to assume it's 24. Oh, 24 was right. Let me strip away this one. There we go. So there you have it. We twist these bare wire. So now those are nice and stripped. Let's get this heat shrink to you. Now you want to. You want to. Uh, 
solder one at a time so so like they don't touch because that's the main thing you definitely don't want them to touch so now i can work on taking this off so we'll snip this down like that there we go Oops, yeah, I don't have any uh, mark. I was going to mark down. So halfway this, okay. Just marking down where to cut this one for future reference. This should be a 16, I believe. Or 14, maybe? Let me try 14. Oh, 14 works. Okay, good. So you have that, that one's stripped. Next step is to put on, I we had heat shrink tubing. Hopefully I have a, uh, oh man. I thought I had a big enough size here. Maybe this, was this the one I used? Ah, here it is. <laughs> so there you go. Got the heat shrink tubing on. Next step is to splice the wires together. We do that right now. All right, after we tin the wire, we just want to splice them together. Now, usually it's easier to have one clamped, but usually how I splice wires, I just put them together like this and just put them on, rest them on the soldering iron, and then they connect together that way. Like so. We want to add more solder. Make sure you don't you don't want any loose connections. And there you go. Soldered together. You want to pull it a little bit, make sure you know, it's nice and snug. Then just pull over the heat shrink tubing. And then we use the heat gun. Let me get that set up real quick. All right, we got the heat gun ready. So let's start it up. Try to get them nice and even. And you see now it's cooling down since I've turned and done with it. So there you go. Now the positive hooked in. Now we do the negative. So we basically just rinse and repeat the same procedure doing this. So I'll get skip ahead for when this is fully connected. All right, guys, I'm back. So as you can see, they're both spliced, ready to go. There's the plug at the end. Now, some things I did off camera, I cleaned the inside of here. It was gross. Uh, right here was all nasty. I cleaned that up. And I also cleaned the inside of here. I also... Reflow soldered some of the connections because, like I said, I think earlier the the power jack was all loose and it was getting a it was a loose connection, so it would intermittent work. So I clean that up. I uh, use some contact cleaner. Use this stuff to spray the board so it's all nice and clean. Now, without further ado, I guess the only thing we have left is to install the battery itself. Just take it, 
plug it in like that, like so. Boom. It is connected. So now I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I gotta figure out what to do with this excess wire here. And there you go. sure it's in there proper and it's not gonna come off there we go make sure this power jack is set in here and there we go it's nice and closed and you just basically just Screw everything back in and you should be good to go. So I'm going to screw everything back in and then we'll test it. See how this thing works. Alright guys, so we got Game Gear all put back together. Looking all nice and fresh. Here's the power. Let's see if this works. Got the Game Gear. Oh yeah. Oops, sorry for the glare. And it works. Perfect. And then when you turn it on, it cuts it off because it's using the, the um, AC adapter. So for that, you want to just plug it in here and just acts as a pass-through. So now it works. So there you go, guys. It's a, my how-to video on replacing the battery pack set for a Sega Game Gear. Now, a lot of these are broken, so it's <laughs> really handy to have this kind of tutorial, and especially, like, there's definitely not a whole lot of uh, tutorials online of how to fix these. So, I hope this helps you guys in repairing these. If you have any questions, you know, leave in the comments down below. I will also leave links for where you can purchase the replacement batteries for these as well as the specs which i forgot to go over but for these initial batteries they were 7.2 volts and 1300 milliamps per hour so you have to try to get it hopefully it focuses i know my camera doesn't want to focus today there we go so take a screenshot of that that's the initial battery but I would highly recommend using this battery and the other thing they don't really go over is size and even when you order batteries it's like impossible to tell like well how big is the battery because they never tell you that in the specs of the battery they just say oh it's 7.2 volts uh, 1600 million per hour I'm like oh great so that's where I came with this up with the snags for I was originally trying to fix the the power back but I bought this battery and it doesn't even fit. So thankfully I didn't waste my money. My money didn't go to a... It wasn't fully wasted because now I have a working Game Gear battery pack, which is awesome. So like I said, guys, um, if you have any questions, let me know, whatever. I uh, hope this video was very informative. And until next time, guys, this is Mark the Game Shark signing out. Have a good day.